praying for you and believing for God to move in this place. Come on, wasn't his presence so good this morning during worship? Uh, that there's nothing like his presence, and, and then we're believing that God is going to continue to move and speak uh, even throughout the rest uh, of this service. So, anybody ever been like uh, driving or maybe in an area where you aren't too familiar? Uh, maybe you're on a road trip or you're driving somewhere and you've gotten directions somehow. Maybe it's through, through GPS or, or something like that. And, and um, anybody ever, you got directions and you were lost? No? Okay, a few of you. Some of the guys, okay, I'm, I'm just proud of you guys for admitting uh, that you were lost. Good job. I, it's Valentine's Day, so maybe that, that's part of the issue. Let me just make sure I get the signal here. There, I think that's a little better. But yeah, pick me up there a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been lost. Maybe the GPS uh, took you in the wrong direction. Uh, we were uh, gifted tickets to go to Disney Hollywood Studios on Friday. Praise the Lord, God is good. And, uh, and we were blessed with those tickets. And, uh, and we were going, and we're not big Disney people. Like, we go whenever someone gives us the tickets. Let's just be honest. There we go. Hey, can you hear me now? No, we just go whenever we're gifted the tickets. And so uh, it might be a little too much. Like, too strong. Uh, but yeah, so, so we're going, so we're not real familiar with it. We've been a few times, but we don't, we don't know all the time. And so we're trying to figure out, and we got the GPS going, and we're following out. And I'm like, wait a minute, then the sign says this way, that's like, and so, so we end up having to go around the curve or whatever. But I don't know if you've ever been, anybody ever been lost? Out on the road, you're driving, and you've been lost. Okay, uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one uh, in the room. And it's kind of crazy. It's like you, you get to a point, and, and you don't know where to turn, you don't know where to go, because the GPS is saying do this, but, but like, I, that doesn't look right, it doesn't feel right, all these guys in the room, we're going to figure it out, I'm going to ask for directions, right, okay, your wife's in the car, like, would you just stop, just stop and ask somebody, no, I've got this, because we don't let things like that beat us, you know what I'm saying, but God, for men, you're, right, but maybe, maybe you've been lost, maybe you took a wrong turn, uh, or something like that, so funny story, we, um, you see this picture on, on the road, this is from our our road trip that we went on last summer. Many of you, we, we kind of told different stories uh, about our road trip uh, last summer. So we went all over the place. We went up to Tennessee. We went over to, to Dodge City in Kansas. We uh, were Tombstone in Arizona. We, we made a, a little uh, short just trek, trek through Texas and, and Route 66 and just all, all this different stuff. New Mexico, where uh, my wife and his family is from. And there's just all these different things we were able to see. Uh, but we're in Kansas, right? And I don't know if you've ever traveled through Kansas. There's not a whole lot of anything in certain parts of it. It's just fields and God country. You know what I'm saying? And, and we're looking at and, and so GPS tells us to turn. So we turn, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's a sign that says, Pavement Ends. Right? Like, yo, man, this is how, like, horror movies go. It's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know? You're know, like, this family gets stranded, and, you know, she gets like, like, that's in our mind. We're thinking, oh, the road is ending. We're, we're in the middle of nowhere. There's a few houses. Like, here, there, but we're, there's nothing. And we're like, we're, free. we're like in between, like, freaking out and laughing hysterically. And, and then, even funnier is there were two of us. We were in like, this little caravan. So, so my father, my Jerry, that you, uh, we were with him, and then my sister-in-law and her son, and then there was another car behind us, my other sister-in-law and her family. And they're like, it's nothing but dust behind us. Like, we thought we were laughing. Like, they're just, we can't even see them. There's just dust from this road. We're, we're like, uh, I think Jerry's like, pavement ends. Like, you're like, what? <laughs> and for like 10 miles, we're on this dirt road, middle of nowhere, not knowing what's going on. The GPS said go this way, so we're following what the GPS says. Uh, fortunately, it was the right road, and we ended up getting on another road that took us, uh, that was on our way to Dodge City, I believe. And uh, just, one of those memories now that we can laugh about, but in the moment, we're kind of freaking out. It's like, where are we going? Where, where are we going? What are we doing? See, in those moments, you have a choice to make. And sometimes it's got to be split second. It's like, do we turn here? Right? I, I don't know if you've ever been driving with someone like, I, I did this. I, I clapped back on my wife a little bit at Disney on that. Do we turn or not? Like, what do we do? Like, oh, I'm in traffic right now. But you might, you, might, you might have to make a decision. Right? Do I turn right? Do I turn left? That doesn't look right. The, the sign says this. I don't care what the GPS says. Right? And you're like, you've got to make a decision. Do I turn here? And before you know it, it's like, how did we end up here? Right? How did we end up lost? How did we end up in the wrong place? How did we end up in this moment? Right? And you might find yourself, where did we go wrong? <laughs> uh, have you ever asked 
ask those same questions in your relationships, in your friendships that you've had over the years, your family, mom and dad, brother, sister, whoever, your spouse. Have you ever had those moments in those various relationships, co-worker, anybody, any kind of relationship, and it's like there's tension, there's offense, there's issues, and you come to the place like, all right, where did we go wrong? And you're not on speaking terms with your spouse this morning, and it's Valentine's Day, it's like, where did we go wrong? You know? And you've got a friendship that you guys were really close back in the day, but now you're not so much. It's like, where, where did we go wrong? I don't know if you've ever been in that place, or maybe you're in that place today. In those moments, you have a choice to make, right? In those moments. What happens in those moments? How do we, how do we get that? How, how, do we, how do we work through those relation slips, right? We started a series last week called Relation Slips, because we slip up sometimes. We're human. We make mistakes. Sometimes we, we get uh, so caught up in ourselves, and, and our right to be right, and, and we get so caught up in what we want, and, and all these different things. Sometimes we slip up, and we, we say the wrong thing, and we do the wrong thing, even unintentionally. And sometimes intentionally, we're really honest. Right? And we slip up, and we mess up, and it's like, man, how, how do we get here? Maybe communication is weak. Maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you quit working on the relationship, or for whatever reason, there's some kind of tension that is there. So what do you do? What do you do when love grows cold? Right? What do you do in those moments? How do you respond? Like, like, like how, what do you do? When, like, it's like, man, did we just become best friends? Yeah. Some of you married couples, maybe, maybe early on you started off, oh, we're doing and we're for love, right? And, and now it's more like, you know, you lost that love and feeling. So, so what, what do we do? How do we, how do we get that back, man? How do we get back to the way things used to be? When things aren't going well, maybe there's tension, maybe there's an offense. Maybe you're getting a cold shoulder from somebody today. Maybe it's a friend, a co-worker, maybe it, it doesn't even have to be your spouse. So I know it's Valentine's Day, and I know that we're talking, I'm just talking about relationships in general, because we slip up in all types of relationships. Maybe you're getting a cold shoulder today. Silent treatment. Fellas, maybe you're getting the couch right now, I don't know. Hopefully with it being Valentine's Day, you're going to get bed. I'm just going to skip on from that. Kids, let your parents get in there, Lord, stop. What do you do? How do you do that? Maybe the phone calls aren't getting returned, text messages are going unanswered. Maybe, maybe you've been unfriended or blocked on Facebook or something like that. Does that happen? I had that happen a couple weeks ago. I didn't do that. I got no problem. I messed up with that. What do you do? What do you do? Which way do you go? Where do you turn? How do you, how do you, do, do you get bitter or do you get better? Do you get bitter or do you get better? Do you get bitter or do you try to work things out and fix what's wrong, right? Sometimes it's a big blowout, tear down, knock down, drag out kind of thing. But oftentimes bitterness grows from stupid little stuff, right? A lot of it has to do with your little annoyances that, you know, your little quirks. Like, there's some people in this room right now that have a thing with the way people chew. I'm not going to point any fingers. But some people in this very room right now have an issue with the way people chew. And it's a bother us. And, and that could be something where bitterness might make its way in. Um, some of the greatest arguments in marriages have come over which way the toilet paper roll goes. Right? Who in the room, you're an over the top with your toilet paper roll. Okay? Right? How many of you are under in the room? Nobody's going to be All right, Eddie. Yes. Come on. With it, Caesar. It don't matter. I just need to use it. So that's not a hill for me to die on. So in my house, we go over, right? But some people let that be a thing, right? Some people let that's not a hill to die on. None of these things, really. Maybe it's how to load the dishwasher, right? 
And you get into it over those stupid little things. Maybe at first it was just a silly little thing, but over time it grew, right? Maybe it's how you know you talk to each other at times. Maybe the sarcasm is strong in your family. Or, or with your friends. But maybe it goes a little too far sometimes and you don't know where that line is, you know? Maybe it's something like that. Maybe it's just maybe it's poor communication. Poor communication. Not on the same page. Maybe it's that honeydew list that never gets done. Fellas, when you get on that. Maybe it's just one thing a week. Do something. Maybe you've got a friend who's only there when they want something. It can happen in any type of relationship. It can happen to people you don't even know that you encounter each and every day. Here's the deal. This is what I want you to understand today. Maybe write this down. So you can remember it or so you can have it later or maybe put it on the floor or something like that. But your life can get better if you choose not to become bitter. Amen. Your life can become better if you choose not to become bitter. And it, and it so easily happens in our lives. To where we get bitter, we are resentful to people. And see, bitterness grows into a lot of bigger things. If you allow it to grow, if you don't deal with it, if you don't squash it in your various relationships, bitter. Bitterness can turn to anger, it can turn to hate, it can turn to resentment. Right? So how, how do we navigate all those things in our relationship? Man, turn to Hebrews chapter 12. There's a great uh, portion of scripture that's going to help us out today. And I, man, I'm praying and I'm believing today that some of you are going to get some freedom in this today. Right? Some of you are going to get free from bitterness. Some of you are going to get free in your relationship. Some of you are going to go back and, and you're going to make some phone calls this week with some people that maybe love is growing old. You, some of you are going to sit down and have coffee with someone you haven't talked to in a long time. Right? Some of you are going to start making some things right in your relationships this week. In Hebrews chapter 12, we're looking at verses 14 and 15 uh, today. Make every effort to live in peace. With only the people that you want to. Make every effort to live in peace with just the people that make you happy. Make every effort to live in peace with all men. That means mankind. Ladies, don't get triggered. Like, you're included in that, okay? Make every effort to live in peace with all. And to do what? Be holy. Live in peace with all men and be holy, because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Here's the deal. Let me pause. Let me do a timeout here real quick. Dealing with bitterness, having peace in your life, it will not come if you don't get this force in the scripture. If you're not living to please God, if you're not putting him first in your life, if you're putting yourself first in your life, guess what? You're going to be susceptible to bitterness. You're going to be susceptible to all sorts of things, sin. And, and mistakes and all sorts of things in your life if we are not trying to be holy and pleasing unto the Lord. Time is. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. To see to it that no one misses the grace of God. Did you know you can miss the grace of God? Did you know you can miss out on the goodness of God? Did you know you can miss out on all the things that God will have for you in your life? I hope that bothers some of you in here today to know that, man, we can miss this. We can miss everything that God has for us. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord seek to it, that no one misses the grace of God, and that no bitter root, so I'm going to say root, no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Come on, we need to pray this morning. Jesus, Lord, we need you. God, I pray right now, Lord, against any bitterness that may be in this room, in our hearts, that we've allowed to rise up inside of us. And God, by the end of this service, by the power of your Holy Spirit, may those roots begin to be clipped. God, may they begin to be shoveled up and shoveled out and thrown out into the fire today. Burn up inside of us, Lord, what doesn't need to be there. Whether it's bitterness, anger. Selfishness, pride, sin, God, burn it up by the power of your Holy Spirit in here today. I speak, I stir within us, Father. Draw us to you today. That God, more of you and less of us. Help us to see, help us to have eyes to see this morning. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. Let no bitter root grow up from struggling with how many. Bitterness has a dangerous root. Now, I don't know, I, I know some of you in the room, you like to plant and do kind of farming type stuff in some rural areas, right? So some of those plants, man, they have roots, right? What do we know about roots? Roots absorb, they store, and they grow, okay? Um, they provide anchorage and support for a particular plant, and they send nutrients to the rest of the plant. So think about it. If you have a root of bitterness in your life, and you're being anchored and supported by bitterness, think about how that could affect your life. Roots and nutrients to the rest of your plant. If you have a root of bitterness and that's going to the rest of you, that's going to your mind where you have negative thoughts, that's, that's affecting your emotional, which ends up affecting you physically. Like this is, this, is, this is what bitterness can do if you don't take care of it. Some of you need to get out the, the, the gloves and the shovels and the hose and the pruning shoes, and you need to get out in the soil of your soul by the power of the Holy Spirit, the authority of Jesus Christ, and you need to start doing some spiritual gardening in your life. It's time to dig up some roots. Come on. It's time to dig up some roots of bitterness in your life because it's not good for you. It's not the way that God has designed you to function. He has created us to have relationships. He has created to be in this life with other people. Whether you like that or not, that's the way it is. And he's calling us to lead our entire lives, including our relationships, in holiness. It's hard to be holy. We've got bitter issues in our life. You see that? You see why he's put that in this passage? We've got, we've got to deal with that stuff that don't let it rise up in you. And there, there's so many, there's so many passages. It was hard to kind of narrow it down and, and, and filter it into one thing. But there's so many things that are Paul all throughout his his writings, through all, all of his epistles, through the, the letters to the different churches and the different people that he was associated with that we have in, in the canon of scripture. So many times Paul speaks about our dealing with people. He's, he's writing to all these churches and and, and, and different things, and, and while we don't really know the author of Hebrews right here, but, but, but Paul has a lot that would accompany this verse. Because he's trying to help that early church who everything is brand new, and, and they're gathering, and, and he's trying to teach them how to deal with each other. That's why it's the rest of the world. It's important because we're in this life together, and we're better together, but it's hard to be together if we're bitter. Right? root of bitterness, it grows within the soil of hurt that was not dealt with biblically. You can deal with it all kinds of different ways. You can deal with it however you want to. You can let it grow and turn into other stuff and, and really do some damage in your life and in your relationships. You can, you can be one of those that internalizes everything. You pack it down, you pack it down, you think you can just ignore it, it can just go away, you sweep it under the rug. And then all of a sudden, all of it builds up, builds up, builds up, and boom, you explode on the wrong person. They didn't see it coming. Right? There's, there's ways you can deal with it, but there's a way that God wants us to deal with it. Deal with it. Difficult. Roots grow underground, right? Roots grow underground. And, and it can seem that bitterness starts as an underground job. And, and, and on the outside, people may look at you and everything might seem like it's okay. And, and, and that everything's cool and everything's going on. And you look normal. And then they think that the relationship is going okay, but underground, there's something building, there's something growing, there's something stirring. And it's, and it's not good. It's going to come out. At some point, we know that, that we mentioned earlier, roots absorb, they store, and they grow. They absorb. Bitter roots absorb painful information, things that have been said, things that have been done. They store words that someone has said against us, and if it's left unchecked, roots of bitterness start to grow. Other things. Now contrast a root of bitterness with love. This is where we're going to go to look at Paul. We looked at this last week, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's famously known as the love chapter because it talks about what love is. So contrast the root of bitterness with love. 1 Corinthians 13, read it last week, says that love keeps no record of wrongs. What does a root of bitterness do? Right? On the other hand, they keep a detailed record of wrongs. Right? 
I get bitter and, and, and it's like, oh, yeah, but you did this last week and, and, and then you always do this and, and you're just going to do it again and you, you're resenting that person and, and, and you're just harboring that offense or whatever that is in your mind. How do you know perhaps if you've got a root of bitterness growing in your heart? One of those ways is if someone has hurt you, they've said something to you or they've done something to you, you can go back to that time and place. You've got the time stamped on your heart to where you, you can remember every single word they said. You can remember what they were wearing. You can remember everything about that moment because you haven't let it go. You haven't dealt with it. I got a, you know, a little personal story we, years ago when uh, hanging out, my, my mom and sister always ran a house in Inglewood, down south. Uh, they love to go to the beach. I know a few of you in the room like to do that sometimes too. And, and there was this one summer where, where we took the kids, and, and they were really little. Um, then this was, this was a few years ago. And uh, we went to spend a few days with them, and, and we were getting ready to leave. And there's this McDonald's on the corner to get ready to go off, uh, off of, um, uh, what is that, Dakarandu? Uh, yeah. That road. Um, and, and we, we go out, and we're going to get some McDonald's on the way back home. So we go into the drive-thru. This guy lets me in. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Because we kind of came in from the other side of the, the, the place, opposite of where the drive-thru was. And so the guy let us slip in, and we slip in. It's kind of a lot. We're away for a minute. Everybody's cool. We're just having, having a great time. And, and, uh, we go order our food. And we go up in the line a little bit more. And I hear, I hear this mumbling going on. I'm like, hey, 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 mumbling something. They got a little louder, and then some like, that's where it's going on. I'm like, what the fuck? Somebody's getting like, I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm Snoopy, so, you know. So we go on, and they give us our food, and, and uh, we, we get ready to go out. And all of a sudden, this dude that was behind us, he was the one mumbling, and he was mumbling about me for some crazy reason. And he's like, you know, blip, 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 blip. I'm like, oh, uh, hold on. When we start to realize that we've got a root of bitterness, when we absorb it, 
that information inside of us and it starts to grow. Bitterness has a dangerous root. The second thing we need to understand is that bitterness also has a poisonous fruit. It's got a dangerous root and a poisonous fruit. And I didn't really need to rhyme that, it's just the way it came out. <laughs> what starts out as an underground job, if left unchecked, it will eventually come out into the fruit that everybody can see. And it will affect other people, it will hurt other people. Verse 15 that we read in Hebrews 12 says, See to it that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. The word for defile is miaino. It means to stain, pollute, or contaminate. If we allow this root of bitterness to grow, it will contaminate your life. It's a poison. Contaminate your life. It will kill. It is a relation slip. And it will kill your relationship if you don't deal with it. If you don't allow it to grow. Verse 15 reads on and says, Whenever the bitter root springs up, many are corrupted by its poison. Bitterness, it brings negative thinking. It brings all kind of other effects. I mean, anger, frustrations, all this one things that lead into stress and anxiety and fear. And for, you know, you, you're formulating all this stuff in your head. You're thinking about you're driving all the way home from work. And you don't even want to go home because it's like, I just know we're going to get in a fight or an argument. And you don't even know what's going to happen. And, and, and bitterness, that root, as it grows, it's going to build into this other thing. It's going to have fruit that you bear. What, what kind of fruit? Like, you'll easily see the bad in other people. And God, God wants us to see the best in people. God wants us to see with His eyes and, and see the potential of the Holy Spirit in other people. Now, there's some things that happen that are just beyond your control, and, and, and bad things are going to happen in Him and through other people, but we can't always look for that. The root of Bitterness, the uh, other thing is that we feel justified in criticizing others and gossiping about them. You, you hear what they said? You hear what they did? Oh, let me go back to their post. Let me, let me go, oh, let me show you what they said on here. And before you know it, you're getting in somebody else's business and they your business. No, no, I just know. You know. We secretly celebrate their misfortunes. We bring many people down. With whom or what are you bitter this morning? Do you have a bitter issue in your life? Do you have some bitter roots that are growing? I mean, that's something you need to pray about through the rest of this message. If you need to ask God right now, God, do I have anything that needs to be checked right now? By the end of this service, can we, can we get rid of any bitterness this morning? Can we cut it out of our life because it's not God's best? Boy, get rid of it. Cut it out. Get it out of your life because your life can be better if you choose not to be bitter. Bitterness is a relation slip. When there's conflict in your relationship, you can get bitter or you can get better. We can choose to get upset, we can choose to fight, we can choose to, to get bitter in that moment, or we can stop, we can pray, we can talk things out and work things through. Some of us, we don't like to talk things out. I just don't want to cause a problem or an issue. I, I don't want to bring that, but, but, but then that causes issues of its own. It's good, it's good to have healthy conversations, it's good to talk about stuff, it's good to say, you know what, babe, like you said this, it, it's going to bother me. You know, I, and, and you don't have that. In marriages, like it's difficult. Guys, we want to fix stuff, right? We're fixers by nature. It's innate in us. So, ladies, if you bring that up, don't, like, we're, we're processing in our head, like, oh, I've got to fix this. What should I do? Right? And, and it's being able to work through all that stuff in, in our life. We've got to deal with it. We've got to work through it. It takes communication, it takes love, it takes the Holy Spirit in our lives. So many different things, but we've got to get rid of it. What does Paul say in Ephesians 4, 31 and 32? He says this, get rid of all, right? And, and I think this is interesting, this progression that he plays out. He says, get rid of all bitterness. So he starts with bitterness. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of, of malice. I think it's interesting that bitterness is first here. Because from bitterness grows rage. Anger and brawling and slander and every form of that. But what's the opposite of that? What, 
how do you find that? What do you do? He says this in the rest of the book. He says, be kind and compassionate to one another. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. All throughout the Pauline scriptures, all throughout Paul's writings, he has this theology, this in Christ theology. So many times he would say, because you are in Christ, dot, 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 blah, blah, blah. And he says, because you are in Christ, the old has gone, the new has come. You've heard that scripture, right? And there's so many things that Paul says, because now you are in Christ, it's different. The way that you react, the way that you respond, how you talk, how you look, everything, because you are in Christ. Right? And, and, and he drops that line in here, says, just as in Christ, God forgave you. So we're supposed to forgive others because Christ has forgiven us. But it's so easy for us, especially if we get bitterness in our hearts and we let bitter roots grow up, it's easy for us to see the fault in the people. It's easy for us to see, well, what I did is not nearly as bad as what they did. Right? But Christ has forgiven you for whatever it is that they have happened in your life. And we are called to reciprocate that because we're supposed to be like Christ. Forgive others. There's this in Christ theology that Paul has. Paul is looking and living through the lens of the gospel. Why? Because Jesus wrecked his life. Jesus changed everything in his life. Paul was a religious leader. He was having Christians persecuted. He was having them in prison. He was having them stoned. He was having them killed. And he has this one encounter with Jesus that changed everything. Because that's what Jesus does. And I'm wondering in the room if Jesus has, if you really have that kind of encounter with him before. Because if you did, everything would change. You are made new. The old is gone. You are not the same person. The way that you used to act, you're not angry anymore. At least you're not supposed to be. I mean, there's some things that you can get, you can get it's a human emotion we get angry about. But it's how you respond from that anger. You're, even Jesus said, you can be angry, but don't sin. Jesus himself got angry, right? But it's how we, it's how we respond in that. Emotion. How we respond in those moments. You're made new. Come on. You're forgiven. Anybody been forgiven this place? In Christ, you are you are forgiven. In Christ, you are complete. Come on. Young people, single people in the room, if you're not there, don't look for anyone to complete you. Because you're gonna get disappointed. The only one that can complete you is Jesus. Right? Marriage is a wonderful thing. Aside from accepting Christ in my life, it's probably the best decision I ever made in my life. Right? It's a wonderful thing, but that does not complete me. That does not give me the happiness God does. That doesn't give me the fulfillment. It's a, don't get me wrong. Like, it's awesome. But there's nothing like the love of God. Some of you don't want to love today with Valentine's Day, but there's nothing like the love of Jesus. In Christ, you are complete. In Christ, the old is gone, the new has come. So get rid of this. Kill the root. Cut it off. Get, come on, get your spiritual show up. Get your spiritual hope and, and start making that mess out of your life. Because it's going to kill you. It's going to kill your relationships. Don't get bitter. Get better. To get better, you got to act differently. Can't expect a, a different result if you don't change anything. Don't get bitter, get better. How do we do that? We love like Jesus. We talked about that last week. We love like Jesus. We love like Jesus. We live like Jesus. Which goes back to that holiness component in the scripture we read earlier in Hebrews. If we're doing it on our own, we're going to, we're going to, apart from Christ, we default to ourselves. Right? So we're going to give in to selfishness. We're going to give in to to, to wanting our own way. But if we have died to ourself, and now we are risen in Christ, in Christ, there it is again. Okay? We won't give in to those things that we want to give. We won't give in to that flesh because we're not living out of the spirit. Amen? Whip this one. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Live like Jesus. Come on, think about that. We think about this one. Jesus was falsely accused. He was falsely in prison, falsely arrested. They had this phony baloney trial that happened like overnight. They never, they never did that. They kind of snuck it in. Kind of sounds like some other stuff going on in our world today. Right? And then, then he 
was falsely punished. That was a criminal's death. His own people rejected him. At times, you and I reject him. If we're really honest. Yet, he still died for all. Whether they choose him or not, he still died for all. If anyone had a right to get bitter, it would be Jesus. If anyone had a right to say, you know what? Forget these people. sake of those that would choose him, for the sake of those that would serve him, for the sake of those that would know him and love him. Because of that, man, we give our lives to him. Because of that, we surrender ourselves. We lay ourselves down. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and be holy. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. And be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. So we get better by killing bitterness with compassion. So be kind and compassionate to one another. Being compassionate is putting aside my need to get upset. It's putting aside my right to be right. And to seek to understand. We don't seek enough to understand, we just blow up. We don't seek to realize, why did this person get upset? Why did the guy in the McDonald's drive through get upset? <laughs> I have no idea. I had to get out of there because it was going to turn into something else. And people don't just wake up in the morning and say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to be a jerk today. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to say something stupid to my wife. Like, we don't wake up and do that. It stuff happens. But, uh, but, but we have to go to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. That's what being compassionate is. And, and learn to seek to understand where are they coming from? A am I the issue? Okay. <laughs> and for men, we, we do that. I mean, why would we ask that question? I'm not the issue. I'm never the I'm. But right now, maybe you are. What's the problem? Where did we go wrong? Where did we make a wrong turn and now we're lost? Where did we lose love? Where did we lose respect? Maybe you need to go back. So many times in, in, in marriage counseling situations, I'm like, I can see, I can see a progression. All right? all right, so here's the deal. You guys are on two different pages right now, going in two different directions. You need to go back. Why did you fall in love in the first place? You need to live there for a little bit. Quit worrying about, they're doing this, they're not doing that, I'm doing this. Go back to what, what was going good. Forgive people. We are called 
and I know that's so difficult, and I don't want to minimize any hurt that anybody's ever been through. God's calling us to forgive. And that may take some time, depending on what it is. God's calling us to forgive. Because why? Because we have been forgiven. Come on, if we pass around a bucket, and you wrote on a little piece of paper what God has forgiven you of, that bucket, if we did that right now, that bucket would be filled with all kinds of stuff. That bucket would be filled with addictions. That bucket would be filled with alcohol and drugs and lust and anger and, and, and lying and cheating and all sorts of things. Yet, while that's in our past, God has forgiven us of those things. And he's calling us to forgive in our relationships. Unchecked unforgiveness will cause bitterness to grow and poison your life. Cut it off at the root. Learn to forgive. That's going to be a process for some of you. But it is worth it. It is worth going down that road. Cut it off. Learn to forgive because you have been forgiven. Make every effort to live in peace with all men. To be bold. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Worship team, you guys can come up. Don't get bitter. Get better. Don't get bitter. Get better. See, I've come to love coffee. Um, before Haley and I got married, I didn't really drink it a whole lot. Right? So she, she's been a great influence in my life. So, so I, I learned to come to drink coffee, you know, even in ministry, you know, you, you're, you get in that flow of things, you get busy, and sometimes you need just a good cup of joe, right? And so, so I've learned to love coffee, and I, you know, I'll have a cup in the morning, uh, sometimes later in the day, I'll have another uh, a cup of coffee sometimes, uh, if I'm feeling uh, a little groggy and I need a little quick pick-me-up, but I've come to love coffee. Uh, some coffee tastes bitter, right? But some coffee tastes bitter. Uh, some of these coffee shops can have that kind of stuff, right? When you're Starbucks and some of your... We, we went to Crazy Cup last night and hung out and had some coffee. I had some Casa con Leche, uh, Irwin, so there you go. And some of the Spanish coffee is a little... It can be a little, it can be a little bitter uh, as well. But, I, you know, I can... I was telling Haley this the other day. If I never drink another Starbucks, I'd be fine. Right? Because it's expensive. Like, every now and then, if we want to treat ourselves, we'll, we'll do that. But I'm good. I'm good with the donut shop, cake up in my curry at home with some sugar and some hazelnut or Irish cream uh, from, the, from the grocery store. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm okay with it. I'm sorry, Eddie's man. I'm, Eddie's man's man who drinks that 30 weight. That, that kind of coffee puts hair in your chest. I, you know, I'm sorry, Eddie. I'm sorry to let you down. You're a man's man. You can have my man card. I like flavor coffees, lots of sugar. I like my coffee sweet. I can make another joke about how I like my coffee, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just let that, leave that to your imagination. That's how I like my coffee, but sometimes I don't, I don't like it bitter. When it tastes bitter, it's like, ugh, it makes you make mistakes, right? I'm like, ooh. I don't like my coffee bitter. But here's the deal. I will only know it's bitter if I take a sip of it. I will only know if, if it's bitter if I partake in it, right? I want to help you with that this morning. Don't take in that bitterness. And I'm going to give you four things as we get ready to close out. Then we're going to pray. I believe that God's going to set some people free this morning. I hope you're ready for it. So four things before we go in to pray this morning. Number one, God knows the real story. Whatever relationship you're in, whatever friendship you're in, whatever mistakes have been made, whatever has happened in your past between that person, whoever it is, whether it's a friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, Co-worker, neighbor, mother, brother, whoever. God knows the real story. He knows what happened, and he wants to heal you. So guess what? You can give it to him. Whatever it is, he knows the real story. You can trust him this morning. You can lay that down. You can lay yourself down at his feet today. Number two, God sees your heart, and he sees the person's heart that you are bitter towards. Come on, and he forgave us. You are forgiven. So let's learn to forgive. God is a restorer of broken things. Amen? And he can restore your relationship. I believe there is always an opportunity for restoration. Even in the craziest of issues. Because I serve a big God. And there's nothing too difficult for him. 
And God is the God of restoration. I believe God can restore whatever has been broken in your relationship. God is the God of restoration and forgiveness and healing. And he wants to heal and restore you and your relationship today, right here, right now. Number three, we have all likely caused some hurt at some point in our life. It's easy for us to see the other person hurting us, but we've all likely caused someone to hurt. Let's be honest. Let's just be real. Right? So let's learn to, to not always point out the flaws in other people, but let God heal us first. So many people are trying to be half of a relationship, and they're not whole themselves. Okay? And the fourth thing is this. I must refuse the bitter cup. I must refuse that bitter cup. So I gotta pour it out. I gotta pour it. I gotta cut that bitter. I gotta cut that root before it even begins to grow. I gotta cut it out. Get rid of it. So don't get bitter. Get better. Right? Come on, stand up with me this morning as we get ready to pray and, and pray for some people. And if you're dealing with bitterness today, I would love for you to come up here and let us pray for you. In just a few moments, we're gonna do that. But don't get bitter. Step in. 